Hello everybody, happy Monday. We hope you had a great Halloween and possibly celebrating Day of the Dead. Uh, we are still in the UK. We're on our last week. We are now in Weymouth. If you follow the English news, there was a giant train wreck yesterday and we were on the last train before the wreck. So that was kind of exciting. We got to our place and we actually, we had four three or four train cancellations and the train company ended up putting us on taxis because nobody was moving. Anyway, long story short, our hour and a half ride ended up being a five hour ride. Um, and we did, were not on the train wreck. So, but the train wreck did cause us a lot of travel God drama. So anyway, we're fine. Um, but we've had a great week in Bristol. We finished up taking care of our lovely Springer Spaniel Betty and while we were in Bristol, we did a couple things. My knee and my hip are still a little bit uh, crunchy, so I eliminated, it eliminated a lot of the walking, but we did, um, first of all, we did make it out to Stonehenge, which bucket list item, 100%, put it on the list, go, go, go. We were so grateful because the owner of our house is the director of marketing at Stonehenge, and she got us free tickets, which saved us about 50 pounds, believe it or not. Um, on top of, it, it cost about 30 pounds or so to take the bus, to, for two people, to take the bus from the train. So it's a very expensive day, so we're very grateful to her. But nonetheless, it was totally worth it. When you, you get off the bus, you go to the visitor center, and then you go to these Neolithic homes, and then you do about a mile walk to the stones. First, you go through some druid woods, and then you can feed the fairies <laughs> with the mushrooms. And then you go through this field. And the, you, from the field, it's the first time you see the stone the stones way off to the right. And then you actually get to the stones, and you can walk around the stones, but you can't walk through the stones. So that was um, really cool. And we sat on this bench and just kind of had a Zen moment and just thought about how cool it would be to be able to walk through the stones. And it was really kind of a, I don't know, call me, but a little vibrational. So that was kind of cool. Then the next day we went on, I've been waiting for this for two weeks since we've been in Bristol, but because of my knee and hip, we had put it off. We ended up doing the um, Bristol Street Art Walking Tour. If you're a fan at all of street art and graffiti, you may know Banksy. He's a famous person that, uh, a famous painter artist that came from Bristol. Uh, he had a piece sell in Sotheby's for, I don't know, seven or eight million dollars. And the minute the judge or the auctioneer banged the gavel, the piece self destructed. Um, so that made a lot of news. And the self destructed piece is now worth more than the original piece, which is interesting. Inky is also from Bristol. So we walked through. Um, the tour, it was really interesting because the first piece we saw, which is this one, is um, a, one of the original Banksy's, and the he actually did this, the location of this piece is right across from where the city council meets, and the night that they revealed the piece was the same night that the city council was debating whether or not Bristol should allow graffiti. And so it was his political statement of saying, you know, graffiti isn't just street writing and letters and so on. It's actual art. And this picture is called Well Hung, well Hung Lover. Anyhow, uh, that picture, that piece promoted or encouraged the city council to vote that some graffiti was allowed. Interestingly, if you see the blue spots on the picture, uh, that was someone who vandalized it and was caught and thrown in jail for two years. So... Anyway, it's a it's a mixed bag of conversation in Bristol about what is graffiti, what is street art, what is legal, what is not legal, what what Bristol city will allow and what it won't allow. So, nice walking tour, uh, two hours a walking tour through Bristol, looking at all the different uh, graffiti or street art. So that was really neat. Next day we did a boat tour of the floating harbor of Bristol. Bristol has uh, fourteen meter tides. And so they have done some engineering to make sure the harbor is always the same level within a couple of inches so that the boats can have an active harbor and active uh, import-export business. It used to be a big harbor for the slave trade and uh, sugar trade. Now it's just more of a recreational harbor. Nonetheless, it's still beautiful. And if you remember from last week, that's where the lorry went into the harbor. So uh, the, lorry, the lorry is now out of the harbor. Um, then we just finished up our week, said goodbye to Betty, got on the train last night, uh, came into Weymouth today. Today we're going to go hike the Jurassic Coast. Then we're going to go see, yay, my best.
best friend from fourth grade. She owns Monkey World. I can't wait to ca have a good catch up with her and see Monkey World. Then on Wednesday, we get on the ship and we sail to Fort Lauderdale. So we've got lots of ports between here and there. And we're on a 14 day cruise to Fort Lauderdale and then to Mexico. So three weeks from now, we will be in Mexico. So by way of one night in Fort Lauderdale, or what, a, a night actually in Houston, we have a layover in Houston. So anyhow, we'll be in the States for 24 hours. Anyway, uh, let us know how you're doing. Drop us a note. Ask us things. Tell us that you want to come visit us in Mexico. We're going to be in Mexico all winter. Talk to you soon.